Today, I'm going to walk you through the 13 mistakes that I've made in the 16 years that I've been lifting weights so that you don't have to make the same. In case you're wondering who I am, my name is Doug and I've been a personal trainer and a certified nutritionist for about a million years now. No, I'm joking. It's been about six years. And in that time, I've helped well over 100 guys to double their energy, their strength, and their confidence so that they can get results like this, 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 and this. And these guys are just like you. Yes, you watching this video right now. So if you like what I have to say in this video, at the end of it, there'll be a link to a questionnaire where you could answer three simple questions that are going to reveal if you're the right fit for my online coaching program. All right, sales pitch over. Let's get straight into it. Now, these are in no particular order. I literally just wrote them down as I thought of them. So number one is ignoring calorie quality and calorie quantity. Regardless of what your goal is in the gym, you need to understand what your maintenance calorie number is. Your maintenance calorie number is the number of calories that you burn based on your physiology, your age, weight, height, and sex, and your lifestyle, your current lifestyle, what you're doing in and out of the gym. And regardless of your goal, when it comes to your health and fitness, this is the most important number in your life. If you're looking to get lean, cut, get shredded, lose weight, whatever the terminology is that you want to use, then you're going to want to be in what we call a calorie deficit. This is where you are consuming fewer calories than your maintenance number. If you just want to improve your overall health, your performance, you want to build a healthy lifestyle, then you probably want to eat around your maintenance calorie number. If you want to build size, strength, and muscle, then you want to be in a small calorie surplus where you are consuming slightly more calories than your maintenance number. To calculate your maintenance calorie number, what I would suggest you do is to take your body weight in pounds, make sure it's in pounds and not in kilograms, and multiply it by 14. Now, this is obviously a pretty rudimentary way of calculating it, and there are far more complex equations and algorithms that I use with my one-on-one -on -one clients when they start working with me to help them calculate their precise numbers. But being honest, this will get you 95% of the way there in terms of accuracy. And it's very straightforward and simple. You can do it in the next five seconds. But calorie quantity is only half of the battle because a lot of people get a little bit ahead of themselves. They've heard of calorie deficits and calorie surpluses before, and they think it's all about calories in, calories out. And don't get me wrong, of course, it is very important. But calorie quality is what's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier. Now, I could do a whole other video purely on calorie quality. So rather than delving into the detail, I'm just going to give you the headlines right now. First and foremost, you want to be making sure that you are eating a high protein diet. Aside from the sort of main benefits of protein that I think most people know, you know, like building up the muscles and stuff like that, protein also helps to keep you full. It helps to keep you away from the high fat, highly palatable, sugary snacks and treats. And regardless of your goal, that is going to be really important because the next tip is to avoid as much processed and junk food as you possibly can. Tip number three is to aim for a high fiber diet. Aside from aiding your digestive health and making sure that you go to the toilet regularly, this is also going to help you build a healthy gut microbiome. And this is becoming more and more important every year. The reason being is that there are more and more studies coming out now done by neurologists that are finding that 90 to 95% of our serotonin, which is our feel-good, happy hormone, is actually produced in our gut. And the way we look after our gut is by feeding it with high-quality, healthy food. So you can lose weight and get shredded on a diet of McDonald's if you were a robot, if you didn't have emotions and feelings and stresses and hard days, because I can absolutely guarantee you, if you're going to fall off, you're going to hate your life because it will just destroy your gut health. It will destroy your endocrine system, which is your hormonal health. Feed your gut with healthy food, and I guarantee you, you're going to be happier. If you're happier, you're going to have more drive. If you've got more drive, all of this stuff is going to be so much easier. You're going to want to strive for your goal. So my top three tips on calorie quality, high protein, high fiber, and limit the amount of sugar and processed food that you eat. Number two is thinking that crunches and sit-ups are what's going to get you abs. And I can understand the misconception on this one because you would think if you want to get visible abs that you would need to work them with targeted exercises like crunches and sit-ups. That does make sense to an extent, but the reality is you all have abs. It's just the vast majority of people, 97% of people actually, can't see that because they're covered in a layer, well, probably multiple layers of fat. So yes, crunches and sit-ups can help to define your abs. But first and foremost, we want to be able to see them. And that leads me nicely on to number three, which is prioritizing bicep curls 
over compound movements. So rather than doing the bicep curls, the sit-ups, the crunches, which are isolated exercises that only work singular muscles, you want to be focusing on compound movements, which are multi-joint, multi-muscle exercises. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, because compound movements not only use multiple joints and muscles, but tend to use the biggest muscles in your body, they burn the most calories. Now, this is obviously very useful, particularly if you are trying to get shredded, because the more calories you burn, the more likely you're in to be in a calorie deficit. And that's where you need to burn the body fat so that you can get shredded and actually see those abs. And the reason for this is that muscles require oxygen to contract. The bigger the muscle you're using, the more oxygen that is required. And the more oxygen that's required, the harder your lungs have to work to breathe in that oxygen. But not only that, it also means the harder your heart has to work to pump that oxygen in your blood to the muscle that you are trying to contract. In other words, if you do compound movements like squats, deadlifts, bench press, hip thrusts, lunges, shoulder press, pull-ups, press-ups, dips, and any other exercises like that, then you are going to be making your body more metabolic. You are going to be forcing it to work harder. It's going to be under more strain and more stress. You're going to burn more calories. However, there is a second benefit to prioritizing compound movements over isolation movements, and that is that the vast majority of them also use your core. You see, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they want to see their abs is they focus on the isolated movements like the sit-ups and the crunches, which aren't weighted. Whereas if I was to get you to do a load of compound movements under relatively heavy weight, not only are we going to be burning more calories, putting you in that deficit so that you're actually able to see your abs, we're also going to be putting your core and your abs under more strain. They are going to grow back stronger. Mistake number four was not understanding progressive overload. And this is a big one, particularly for the guys out there. Progressive overload is very straightforward. It is increasing the amount of volume that you lift every session that you go into the gym. So let's take a really simple example. If today I go into the gym and I leg press 100 kilos and I do three sets of 10 reps. That means for every set, I've done 100 kilos times by 10. So that's 1,000 kilos. So I then go and do three sets. That's 3,000 kilos. My goal the next time I leg press is to do more than 3,000 kilos. Now, the simple way to do this is to continually increase the amount of weight that I am leg pressing. However, after a while, this will become difficult, if not impossible. And this is where you want to start manipulating the other two variables. Now, I suggest you start by manipulating the number of reps that you do. Because if you lift 100 kilos for 10 reps, that's 1,000 kilos. If you lift 100 kilos for 12 reps, that's 1,200 kilos. However, if you were to add another set, yes, you're going to go from 3,000 kilos to 4,000 kilos, but it's going to take you an additional five minutes or so. And most people already use time as an excuse to get in the gym, and I don't want to give you another reason to not go. So let's make your workouts as efficient as possible. Let's prioritize increasing the weight. Once that becomes difficult, if not impossible, let's focus on increasing the number of reps that you do. Progressive overload is what's going to get you bigger and stronger muscles. It's what's going to give you that feeling that you're continuing to make progress, which is why it's called progressive overload. One of the biggest mistakes I see guys make in the gym is they don't track their workouts. They don't track their lifts. They go in, they train hard, but then they go in again the next time and they do the exact same thing. And then they get frustrated when they don't see any progress, when they don't feel like they're getting any stronger. Well, of course, you're not going to get any stronger because you're just doing the same thing. Your body and your muscles adapt under increased stress and stimulus. If you go in and just continue to put it under the same stress, the same stimulus, it's not going to feel like it has to get any bigger or stronger. A great example of this is the story of Milo and the bull. Being completely honest, I have no idea whether this is myth or actual true story. But basically, a guy called Milo used to carry a little baby cow, which I think are called calves, up a hill every single day. No idea why. Maybe he was absolutely off his rocker. Who really cares? But the point is, is that as the cow grew from a calf to a cow to a bull, I don't, I don't actually know if that's like how biology of cows work. I also don't really care. But the point is, as the cow got bigger, he continued to carry it up the hill every single day. He was progressively overloading by lifting a slightly heavier cow every single day. And as the bull grew in weight, so did Milo's strength. And then mistake number five, I've already kind of touched on not tracking my workouts. Guys, honestly, this is such a simple, straightforward one, but it's going to be a complete game changer. If you want to get bigger, stronger, if you want to get more shredded, if you want to feel better, if you want to get healthier, whatever your goal is, I strongly encourage you to track your workout. It takes you an extra five minutes at the end of your session to record 
the lifts that you've made. It means that you don't have to remember it. It means that you can go back in and continually push yourself to get better, whatever better means for you. Mistake number six is thinking that bulking means eating everything in sight. So true story, around the age of 25, I decided that I want to get bigger and stronger and feel more like a man. So I went on a bulk, but I was not a nutritionist. I was not a personal trainer. In fact, I was completely clueless. And I decided to just eat everything in sight. In fact, it was a great excuse to be able to eat all the things that I wanted and just as many of them I wanted and tell people that, well, it's fine because I'm on a bulk. And what happened? Well, I put on about 20 kilograms, but I didn't put on 20 kilos of muscle. No, I put on 20 kilos of fat. So not exactly the look I was going for. The reality is, guys, if you want to bulk, if you want to put on muscle strength size, then that's awesome. I think a lot of people would benefit from doing that but you only ever want to be in a very small, a five to 10% calorie surplus. So again, like I said, right at the beginning of this video, the most important number when it comes to your health and fitness is calculating your maintenance calorie number. So take that number and then multiply it by 1.05 or 1.1, depending on whether you want a 5% surplus or a 10% surplus. If you are already super duper lean, or if you're just starting out, then you can get away with a 10% surplus. But as you start to gain weight, you want to taper this back. Taper it back to 5% and then just stay there. Be consistent with it. And I'm going to say something controversial now, but trust me when I say this, bulking is harder than cutting. Don't hate me. Okay, number seven is a big one. And that was not caring about my sleep, either my sleep quantity or my sleep quality. Now, up until the age of 25, let's say, you can kind of get away with this because you're just made of rubber and magic, as Chris Williamson says all the time on Modern Wisdom. But after the age of 25, if you are purposefully, and I say purposefully because most people are purposefully depriving themselves of enough sleep and enough good quality sleep, then you might as well just be self-harming, to be honest with you. Sleep is so important for a number of reasons. But for me, the biggest reason is my mental health. When you are asleep, it helps to bring your endocrine system, all of your hormones, back into balance. If you are depriving yourself of sleep, this isn't going to happen. In fact, there's a guy who did an anecdotal experiment on this, on himself, actually, and he basically stayed up all night and then did a testosterone test and found that his testosterone was about half what it normally is because he had stayed up all night. He then went to bed, slept well the next day, woke up, and his testosterone had gone back to normal levels. And again, I've done whole of the videos. In fact, I've done a whole series on testosterone on my channel. So there was so much to talk about there, which I'm not going to get into today. So go and check out those videos if you want to understand the benefits of boosting your testosterone naturally. But it's not just your testosterone, it's all your other hormones, your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, your leptin, your ghrelin, which are the hormones that regulate your appetite and your hunger. Sleep overall is probably what moves the needle 50%. I used to think that all of this stuff, health, fitness, was like a little bit of a triangle. That's a terrible triangle, I know. But I used to think it was a triangle of movement, nutrition, and sleep. I used to think that they were equally as important, like 33.3% each. Now I realize that sleep is probably about 50 to 60% of all of this. People will say, oh, it's 80% diet. Oh, no, it's 100% mindset. Oh, no, it's 47% trading. My opinion, and prove me wrong, is that it's probably 50 to 60% sleep. If you are not getting your sleep in check, everything else will fall down. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but in a week, in two weeks, in a month, in three months, which is how long it's going to take you realistically to change your life and achieve big goals. If you are not checking your sleep, if you are not staying on top of it, both sleep quantity and sleep quality, guys, you're never going to get there. So I strongly encourage you to get on top of that. Sleep quantity, we all know the whole seven to nine hours. Honestly, I don't know anybody who's sleeping nine hours. If you are, fair place, you're incredibly jealous. But more importantly, focus on your sleep quality. Sort out your sleep environment. Remove all the electronics from your room. Use blackout blinds and make your room as dark as possible. Make your room as cold as possible. Invest in some decent earplugs so you're not disrupted with outside noise during the night. And then invest in a good bed and bedding. Because I guarantee you, that investment will ROI. It will give you such a strong return on investment over the next 5 to 10 years that you'll be so happy you have made it. Let's say you spend $1,000 or £1,000 on a really high-quality sleep environment. You know, blackout blinds, a good fan, 
bedding, a nice mattress and a bed frame and nine, you know, all of this stuff. If you dollar cost average that over five years, it works out to like a dollar or two a day. It costs you absolutely nothing. But think about how much better you're going to feel. Think about how much better you're going to look. Think about your relationships, your career and everything else that is going to benefit from you maximizing your sleep environment and your sleep quality. And another one that goes hand in hand, reason eight, I think I've actually lost track completely, is drinking too much alcohol. Now, again, listen, depending on where you're at in your life, depending on what age you are, I'm never going to be that person who tells you to be boring and not go and have fun. But if you are in your mid 30s, which is what I am, I'm 36 years old, it's probably time to start checking yourself, man. Like, honestly, alcohol is going to slow you down. It goes hand in hand with the sleep because it destroys your sleep quality. If you've ever worn a whoop band or an aura ring or even an Apple watch, you're going to see this for yourself. And it's kind of ironic given the male bravado image that goes with beer, but it's actually estrogenic. In other words, it promotes the production of increased estrogen in your blood after you've drunk it. So drinking beer is actually going to make you feel like less of a man. I'm not going to spend too much time on alcohol. I think we can all accept that it's pretty damn bad for us. There was actually a study that came out not too long ago that showed that it was responsible for more deaths, more harm to society than heroin, which is kind of alarming. And listen, I love a night out every now and then, but... If you're serious about hitting your goals, if you want to prioritize health and fitness, cutting out alcohol for three to six months, I'm not saying forever, just three to six months, is going to change your life for the better. Mistake number nine was training too little. Not putting my muscles and my body under enough stress and stimulus to grow bigger and stronger. There's a forever debate in the fitness and bodybuilding community about training frequency and volume that I don't think we're ever going to perfect. But I'd say if you're training less than three times a week and less than three times a week hard with high intensity, you're not training enough. Equally, mistake number 10 was training too much. Overtraining is a real thing, particularly after you've passed the sort of newbie gains phase that you can go through in the gym. When you're first starting out, you could train seven days a week if you wanted to. It would hurt because you'd have a lot of DOMS, delayed onset of muscle soreness, but you would see frightening results, like the sort of results where people would ask if you've been on a steroid cycle, if you did this when you first started training. I am not encouraging any gym newbies to do this. I'm just saying that you can get away with it. As you become more of an intermediate and advanced lifter, you do need to respect the rest day. You get to a point where the law of diminishing returns starts to kick in, where your muscle just doesn't have the time to recover to be able to grow back bigger and stronger, because you literally will not be able to progressively overload one of the mistakes that I made earlier was not understanding progressive overload. If you cannot progressive overload because you're not recovered enough, you're not going to get bigger and strong. So training too little, training too much, finding that sweet spot. For me, that is training five times a week hard. So I will do push on a Monday, legs on a Tuesday, pull on a Wednesday. I will rest on a Thursday. I will do a leg session on a Friday and then I'll do an upper body session on a Saturday. It always blows my mind that people do push pull legs and not push legs pull because if you split up the upper bodies the push and the pull with a leg session your upper body is going to be more recovered now of course you're using antagonist muscle groups when you're training push and pull but you can't tell me if you do a hard pull day where you're training your back and your biceps that your triceps and your chest aren't going to take over at some point yes they are not the prime movers they are not the main muscle that you are using but you are still going to be putting them under some stress and stimulus. So I like to break them up. I like to do push, legs, pull. It just gives your body that one day of recovery. Now, to be very clear, I'm not saying that you have to train five days a week. I am not saying that my split is perfect. I'm saying that it works very well for me. It enables me to enjoy my workouts whilst progressively overloading and making progress towards my goals, which for me are the most important things. You need to find your own sweet spot. But if you're training less than three days a week, or if you're training all seven days a week, I think you're training too little or too much. And then mistake number 11, which ties nicely into this, was not training with enough intensity. Guys, the biggest mistake that I see the most guys make in the gym is lifting with their ego. Lifting weights that are too heavy for them. Do not be this guy. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you want to get bigger and stronger, you need to be working the muscles that you are trying to grow bigger and stronger. 
If, for example, you are trying to do a bicep curl, but you are swinging your arms like this, just so you can impress that girl who doesn't even care and literally thinks you're a bit of a loser for doing it like that, it's not going to work. You're just going to hurt your elbows and you're probably going to do some damage to your shoulders as well. Train with high intensity, so you want to be training to near failure, particularly on your last set of each exercise. And you want to be making sure that you're really squeezing the muscle that you're trying to use. So you're really making the most of the contraction on each and every rep. The 12th mistake that I made, guys, was not training with any consistency. Listen, Rome was not built in a day and you are not going to hit your goals tomorrow. But if you are diligent, if you are consistent, if you listen to everything that I've said today and basically do the opposite of all the mistakes I made, you will hit your goals now when you hit your goals is up for debate. That's going to depend on so many factors, your genetics, your training frequency, your diet and your nutrition, your sleep, like we talked about, your training intensity. But the biggest thing is going to be your consistency. If you can dial all of this in, if you can find a sustainable routine that works for you, you are going to hit your goals. It's guaranteed. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of peace of mind. And mistake number 13, last but certainly not least, maybe even the one that I regret the most, was not training legs for about 10 years. I was that typical guy who went into the gym in my 20s and just wanted to train chest, back and arms and my lower body suffered for it. But not just from an aesthetic point of view. There is a place you go to mentally when you're in a leg session, when you're in a hard leg session and you just have to get through it and it's nothing but pure hell but when you get through it and you didn't die you can look back and be proud of what you achieved and that leg day mental pump isn't something you get from training arms or chest not only that as i said earlier if your goal is to cut to get shredded to lose weight training your legs using those big muscles some of the biggest muscles in your body your glutes your hamstrings and your quads is going to help you to burn more calories what it's also going to do though, and this is where it helps regardless of your goal, is to release more testosterone and more human growth hormone into your bloodstream. And I didn't realize that. If someone had told me that at 21, I would never have missed a leg session. Training legs can actually positively affect the size, the muscular size of your upper body quite significantly. It's also going to boost your mood, improve your sleep, make your sex life better, and all the other benefits that you get from improving your testosterone levels naturally. So guys, those are the 13 mistakes. Ignoring calorie quantity and quality. Thinking crunches get you abs. Thinking bulking means eating everything in sight. Not understanding progressively overloading. Not tracking my workouts. Prioritizing bicep curls over compound movements. Not caring about my sleep. Drinking too much alcohol. Training too little. Training too much. Ego lifting. Not training with any consistency and skipping leg days. Those are all the mistakes that I made in the first 10 years of me going to the gym and lifting weights. And funnily enough, in those 10 years, I made almost zero progress. If you compare that to my last six years, the progress I've made is absolutely frightening. So trust me when I say this, guys, if you implement what I've said today, if you avoid making these mistakes, you are going to skyrocket your gains and your progress. As I promised at the start of the video, if you are still here, first and foremost, thank you very much for watching all the way through, guys. I really hope you will show your support by smashing the thumbs up button and of course, subscribing to the channel. But if you would like to find out a little bit more about my online coaching program and whether you are a good fit for it, then you can go ahead and click the link in the description of this video to answer three very simple questions. Or whether you do or don't, honestly, I don't care. It's completely up to you. But I hope you've enjoyed this video nonetheless. And until the next one, bye.